Today on Versus, we take it back to a time where the only way you can make fun of Steven Seagal was how he ran. It's hard to kill versus above the law. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Versus. I'm Brandon. I'm Andrew. And today we've got a special guest. We've got a new member of the Macho Movie Madness crew. Uh, oh, our, yeah. good our good friend Kenny is going to join us here probably from now on, if, if possible. So uh, welcome, Kenny. Thanks for having me, guys. He is a bona fide cinephile, just like the rest of us, and a, and a true Halloween fan, a, a man of my legions here. He's... <laughs> He's, I've got I've I've got I've got a major another major player to the Halloween fandom here. So I'm, so, I'm Andrew, on an island out here by myself. Yeah, Andrew Andrew's a, like he's been outnumbered, but now he's screwed. Yeah, <laughs> the we're, odds we're, are not in your favor. No, we're leaving him behind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, today on Versus Guys, we are going to be covering Hard to Kill versus Above the Law, uh, a time where Steven Seagal was. Um, I don't know how you say in his prime, uh, maybe taken more seriously other than the way he ran. Um, well, and I believe above the law was his, his first. first, his first. Yeah. And hard to yes. kill would have been second or third. I think, um, out for justice. Second, was in I, there too. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think out for justice was right after maybe it was 91, both great movies, both great action movies. Steven Seagal comes into prominence late eighties and shows us there's a new tall string being, jacked up guy in town that <laughs> they could close line people and judo not chop so them in the neck. Not so much anymore. Uh, he looks like he could tackle a buffet at this point. <laughs> uh, but back then, I mean, he, he could do it on screen and he could do it for real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really he could. Some of those stunts and fight scenes in those movies were pretty rough and tumble. Like the one thing about him, and this is before he gained the weight, but he was big. He was tall. He's a tall guy, especially for a guy in Hollywood. And he would just straight up topple over you like he would out he would yeah. just out and he was fast for his size there's there's final fights in some of his movies where he gets hit once i know yeah and, yeah which is which is really over the top and ridiculous when you kind of think about it which you know i think that's when you take some of these other action movies the other like universal soldier and stuff and you you see how great they are but something about just him doing it in a way where he's he's not doing it just with a gun i mean he's he's slapping wrists with people and and right. yeah was it uh, was it Glimmer Man? Where the only reason he gets hit is when he is in the final fight. He says, "Give me your best shot." Yeah, and let's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One thing I admire about him before we get into the categories is I just have to say is his ability to kill someone is pretty much untouched. And that's and I say that even by Schwarzenegger because uh, Steven Seagal is the only one that kills people three times in one setting in a movie, and, like just completely. <laughs> I mean, he, I mean, you talk about chop them in the neck, break their neck, turn it around, shove them through a, a screen, stab them in the head, and throw them down a flight of stairs. I mean, they end up on fire. Ways, right? I mean, yeah, like, yeah, in, into an explosion. I mean, he just, I mean, he will overdo it, and I love it. Like, and yeah, and I'm looking at you, under siege, <laughs> killing, killing, killing Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Just, yeah, and it seemed like the under siege two was the same way. Like he's been dead for three minutes, dude. You, you don't have to throw him around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but he just. Uh, by the way, I know that we're not talking about it today, but that uh, that disarmament in Under Siege two on the train where he just kind of does this and the and the knife flies into the wall was one of the best scenes ever. <laughs> <laughs> this oh shit. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll get into the categories. Not waste a lot more time, but. Um, so today on on versus our categories most mostly kind of uh, same old same old here we're doing story we're doing setting doing acting action and antagonist so uh who well I tell you what I'll tell you what I'll put you on the spot Kenny we're gonna let the new guy go first who get what do you pick for story for story I I had to go with hard to kill just for you have the whole you know his wife gets killed. And so it's kind of a revenge, revenge journey for uh, Seagull, you know, when he's yeah. going to kill as many people as he can. And, and again, that was, it, it was tough to pick the storyline for me, but that, I went with hard to kill. Okay. Andrew? Um, as much as I liked, and there was, there was more to uh, above the law, as far as, you know, the inner playings of, of the crime that was going on. Right. I chose hard to kill. To me, it reminds me of a Western, like Kenny was saying, it's a, uh, local lawman gets killed off and his family gets killed off 
and he has to he has to uh, come back and, and get his revenge and it's very western at its core and, yeah. and that's what I liked about it yeah and uh, um, I thank you for saying that because that's exactly what I was thinking and that's why I chose hard to kill as well pretty easy choice I think like I said there was a lot more going on in above the law um, but I think a formula like that is always yeah. is always like a clear winner for me it's, it's, it's just keep it's, it, keep it's it simple classic. stupid yeah keep it simple <laughs> exactly uh, I guess we can move on to setting. This one here was a little bit tougher for me because I don't dislike either setting, but I also don't love either setting. I think I would have to probably go with Hard to Kill. I'm gonna go. I'm going with Hard to Kill for sure on this. I think just because it, I th the hideout, you know, outside of the city, it changes it up a little bit. I don't know. I think I think just maybe it looks nicer. It just seems like it looks yeah. nicer. It seems more reasonable that you would go to a you know some place outside of the city in a hideout and then recoup and he, he's I mean, completely it, he's completely helpless and he seems safe there you're right yeah i think it, i think it's important for the journey kind of like uh, in the first turtles movie you know they had to go away for a little while and and come back that's i, I mean that's kind of part of the, of the plot there and i think it works out really well for it but uh, yeah I, I didn't just it's not that i hated above the law setting it's just eh, this didn't stand out but I, I also chose Hard to Kill. I like it for that serene setting. And there was there was a little bit of city stuff, you know, when he's at the docks yeah. at the beginning. And he's, yeah. you know, he's filming. I think at the time he was, he, he wasn't a senator. He was just like a an up-and-coming, you know, yeah, city politics. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Con councilman or something. I love I love the mansion that the last fight last, ends up yeah. at. Mm -hmm. That's actually the mansion from The Big Lebowski, where the dude goes in to meet The Big Lebowski. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I didn't know. You don't that. go out looking like that on a weekday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have to say that I do like the hospital scene too, where, where she's trying to get him out. That was pretty cool. I, I thought that yeah. was a nice, nice sequence. And and I did, I did like. Um, I guess there was more to the it law. than the train there's some, setting. There's some cool shots in Above the Law where the elevated trains over them, and they're you know they're doing stuff with the car chases and everything. Mm -hmm. I like how they they shot that like through the L train yeah. and everything, but. uh yeah, that just wasn't enough to be hard to kill for me. Yeah, I guess it just didn't. It wasn't different enough. Yeah, Kenny, what say you on setting? I I kind of lean towards the way you guys did, and and it was the hideout for me that that made me pick hard to kill. Uh, yeah, I'm not crazy about really about either one of the settings in in either one of the movies. And that I went with the hard to kill. Yeah, I, like I said, it's I guess when you really break it down, there's just a lot more uniqueness to the hard to kill. You've got I mean, you have that bar fight, uh, which I really enjoyed in Above the Law, but you had the mm -hmm. the convenience store situation at the beginning of Hard to Kill. Yeah, that was cool. Was was really cool. I and that that, that I think that was that was my first uh, Steven Seagal movie, and I don't think I mentioned that yet. Hard to Kill was so I maybe I'm a little bit biased, uh, but that's the one scene that always stood out to me was him. I guess it's because my it was my first introduction to Steven Seagal. And him taking out these dudes, terrorizing this shopkeeper, you know, in the, in the convenience store. Anyway, uh, for acting, Andrew, you want to take this one first? Okay, for so for acting, I went with Hard to Kill once again. Um, Steven Seagal in this one seems a little bit more seasoned than he does in Above the Law. Um, I, I, I mean, I guess there could be an argument there, but uh, I, I also I, I also like like kind of the double headed. Uh, Antagonist. We'll get more on that later, but William Sanderson. Sorry, William Sadler, who played Death in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey yeah, and was yeah, in yeah. Die Hard 2. I, I like the way he played that. I liked his henchman, whose name I didn't write down in my notes, who uh, is, is constantly after uh, Mason Storm, which is a completely ludicrous name. Oh, <laughs> he got yeah, that out of it. Yeah. He fed, he fed yeah. name generator or something. But uh, Axel was his uh, henchman. Axel. Axel. Okay. Okay. There yeah. it was. Um, I, but yeah, I there there was some really good acting in um, Above the Law. I I like I like the guy, uh, his ex Vietnam partner, who uh, you know he was in Major League as a terrorist, the old the old pitcher and everything. Yeah. I, I kind of like the turn that that character had at the end. But but for me overall, um, Hard to Kill was it for me. I I don't have a whole lot I tied on this. I mean the the I laugh at the acting uh, in both. Again, uh, Seagal, I don't really think he's ever really been a, a, 
great actor. For me, it's mostly just the fighting with him. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's just me. I do like uh, William Sadler. He, I mean, that guy's good in everything that he yeah, does. Yes. He is. He is good in everything. He can make just about anything work. If you can make death work in Bill and Ted, you can do anything. <laughs> yes. So I, I often I mean, tell my wife, don't overestimate or don't overlook my body. So I'm going to end, end with a tie for me. Well, that's okay because I also picked Hard to Kill. So it after watching Above the Law again for the first time in a while, the main bad guy, which we'll get into, didn't act terrible uh he wasn't bad and seagal at times wasn't really that bad considering it's seagal right it's an action movie and it's just that's not what he's there for he's just there to hurt people and look good on camera doing it a lot of those guys you run into with the exception of a couple guys who become stars later who may have appeared like michael rooker you know who appeared in above the law uh william sadler and um i can't remember the guy the guy's name who plays o'malley and even a couple of the henchmen you've seen in other 80s, 90s movies, I think I think it just rounds out a better crew, a better acting crew. And I, th- I mean, well, and you got Kelly LeBrock who just looks good. I forgot O'Malley. He's a he's a really well-rounded character. I like him. He is, too. and he's a really good character. Uh, and you know, he's the one he's the one buddy that you can trust who's in the force who who's smart enough. Luckily, you know, they 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 uh, wrote him really well. I think you know, like he's a smart yeah. enough character that he utilizes everything he can utilize opportunity wise. And he knows like, you know, he's the one that chose to keep it a secret that Mason was in a coma, not dead. So yeah, I thought, I thought it, I thought it was written fairly well and his acting acted just okay for giving the time frame. So yeah, I mean, it wasn't that hard of a choice for me. So now we get into the, the meat of it, the action, what we're all here for, what we're all here for, right? I guess, I'll take action. Um, I chose above the law, and that might be weird to say. Uh, I love some of the fights in Hard to Kill. Um, I think there were better moments in Hard to Kill. I think there were better scenes. There were better. There was better tension. But above the law was a better action film. Does that make sense? Like there was more explosions. There's, there's, there was there was more gun mass there was more, quantities of action. Right. Right. So, I mean, that, I had to give it to Above the Law in that sense because it was just, there was just more of it. Whereas you had more suspense and build and storytelling in Above the Law or in Hard to Kill. Sorry. Go ahead, Kenny. What's your pick? Surprisingly, I went with uh, Above the Law. Th- this is where I surprised myself. Hard to Kill is my favorite skull movie. Yeah. But I- I'm kind of with Brandon. I thought uh, I thought the action uh, was better in Above the Law. Uh, it was more intense. Lots of guns. The hand-to-hand fight scenes. Uh, I mean, it's hard to kill. When they find him at the hideout, and him and Kelly, you know, they got to fight their way out of there, and he's driving that little Jeep Wrangler. I think he killed two guys with that Jeep. And, <laughs> and those were awful. I mean, he hits the one guy, and it's like the guy jumps off a trampoline and like, flies through. I thought I was watching an episode of Magnum P.I. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it was kind of like... I mean, <laughs> It was, like that's not a Seagull thing. It would have been better if he went by on the Jeep and maybe ripped his throat. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but you know what? Uh, he was still straight face doing it. I mean, he always has that same look on his face the entire time. Oh, yeah. No matter the what he's doing. Death. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. The uh, look of he could be tightening a, a tutu on a little girl and he'd be having mm-hmm. the same look. I believe it. Steve Claire. Yeah. <laughs> and the the final the you know the final two kills for both movies. Uh, Hard to kill, you know, he gets the revenge when he kills Axel, because Axel was the one that killed his wife. Yeah. You I know, remember he you. Him in the neck with the, yeah. And then yeah. front kicks him. Like, again, yeah. you know, overkill him on the kill. He already killed him with the pool stick to the neck. Yeah. But then he goes ahead and kicks his nose through his brain with the front yeah. kick. And I enjoyed that. That that was a good kill. But his fight with uh, Zagon at the end of uh, Above the Wall was, uh, I, I thought it was a better fight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brutal and brutal. Yes, I yeah, mean yeah. He, he broke his arm. Massacre. Yeah, yeah, and I, I read that the character that played Zagon actually broke his nose for real. Like, oh, really? and I don't know if that's what they left in where Sadal's all bloody, like all the way down his chest. But yeah. I'd, I'd read that that he actually popped him on accident for real. Is that is that why he was really so loopy at the end? They had to drag him out of there. It's like, <laughs> his I, eyes I've never, he's there. never been he's never been hit before. <laughs> <laughs> 
And it's, I can't uh, believe it's never happening. been that bloody ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's like, from this moment on, this is never going to happen again. Yes. He, even never. when he was in a coma and, and shot. He, I, I don't think he bled as much when he got shot and hard to kill. Yeah. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> yeah, nobody. Man, so, with, uh, his, with his ego, I believe that, too. <laughs> 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 All right, Andrew, I guess, you, what, what did you pick? Uh, I also picked Above the Law. Um, for all the reasons we've said, there's just so much more action. And then there's this really incredible scene in that parking garage, the stunt where they take the car and the back wheels go out the, the back, up, like eight stories above the street. Yeah. I saw that. Yes. I'm like, yep, that's my pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. You know, it's funny. And the it's dude, uh, he looked like a dummy. Like that was a dummy doll. You can tell. <laughs> oh, on the back. He flew yeah. off the back of the car. <laughs> yeah. I love it. But that, that was such a cool death. And I, I want to point out again, I don't know if you guys see real quick. Uh, did you see him taking his shoes off? I, I didn't know. As, as he's back, I, I, I couldn't figure out what he was doing, and I'm rewinding. I'm pretty sure he's taking his loafers off. I was like, well, I don't know what you <laughs> planned on doing with them. But it didn't work out for him. <laughs> you got to be more aerodynamic for flight, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's, that's what it is, yeah. Well, I'm about to take a tumble. I got to make this feel better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what? This uh, it's funny uh, how like close we all are on our picks. Yeah. I mean, like we're all like we're all kind of picking the same thing pretty much, which is pretty wild. And we have I don't think we've really differentiated, have we at all? I mean, have we ever had a verses like that before? I don't know if we have or not. So I mean, we got story. Yeah, other, than, other than Kenny having the one as a tie. Yeah. Story, setting, acting, yeah. all goes to hard to kill. Action goes above the law. I mean, I hate to announce it already. We've already got it. You know, yeah. just like that. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and finish it out. We, oh, and t- antagonist. I guess that makes this... I guess it doesn't matter what this last category was anyway. Um, but we'll go ahead and do it uh, with antagonist. And uh, I guess I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it real quick. Uh, I picked Above the Law. And I... So did I. I, I like... You did too, Kenny? I did, yeah. Okay, so so, so uh, three to two, uh, Hard to Kill is going to win. I just want to mention, you know, for the antagonist, neither, neither one was bad. Like, for enjoying... Axel and and William Sadler, his role, Senator Trent. I enjoyed all the characters in that. I thought the story was better, but it comes down to that end fight, right? You know, this guy Zagon is a, he's a torturer. He's a he's an evil dude, right? He's obviously a corrupt guy, and you have kind of the same with Trent. He's just not. He he's got all, all he everybody does, else does. He doesn't do the dirty work. He won't get his hands dirty, and that was the difference for me. Yeah, well, he's a politician and not, you know, I mean, that's that's where you get a little bit of difference. You, you know, you, you differ a little bit. And, you know, Trent was a little bit more of a puss, whereas Sagon was not as much. So, yeah, uh, easy, another easy pick for me, I think. You know, yeah. as much as I like the bad guys in Hard to Kill, it's when you put them up together, Sagon would kick the shit out. Anybody's going to kick the shit out of a senator. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I like the way they I like the way they looped that back around how that character came back into his life after so many years and yeah. that was a nice touch. That was a nice touch. Yeah, I like that too. Well, I mean, that's one thing about versus you just never know how they're going to end. I mean, we had we had a winner a little bit early in this one. What was the rating on this, Andrew? You talked about that earlier. Was it above the law that was rated higher than Hard to Kill? Uh, if you go by IMDb, one's a six and one's a five point eight. Well, I, I I read something before this that Hard to Kill was like in the fours or something, four out of ten or something. I don't. I oh, think it was really? Rotten Tomatoes. It might have been Rotten Tomatoes though. It was, I think it was it was pretty low in like forty percent. Yeah, I mean it was forty percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and I thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't see, I didn't catch uh, above the laws rating but i thought that was kind of interesting considering i thought hard to kill it, other than maybe under siege i thought that hard to kill is it, it probably still even over under siege is his strongest movie it's well-rounded you know what i mean i, I enjoy it and it, it has more heart than a lot of his movies has because he actually shows vulnerability in it yes it it's got my favorite my favorite steven seagal one-liner i'm gonna take you to the bank trent yeah. To the blood, blood bank. bank. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Stupid and dread. I love you, you can't beat that. No. I don't I don't know what to do with my hands right now because I've never had a versus that's been this straightforward and, and you know, like this has been wild. It's just been short, yeah. sweet, and easy. So, yeah. so didn't we before, do uh, like Night Blade Valentine versus the remake or something and it was like a straight sweep? <laughs> Probably. I don't remember. I'll have to go back and watch. That was years ago. But yeah. I, I, th- I think we've had one like that. But it had boobies, so we were all like, yay. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that probably was. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so who win. wins in a fight? Nico Toscani or Mason Storm? 
That's a good question. They can do anything. Is it got to be hand to hand? Hand to hand. Man, I don't know. I feel like I'd say Nico. Maybe almost Nico. like they're the same guy. Well, yeah, it's almost yeah. like they're the same guy. <laughs> I'd probably lean toward Nico too. I, I just feel like I, it feels like I think maybe because he was just so like straight brutal in that in that. He, he just he seemed like more of a killer. He was definitely yeah. the he well he he was like a you know he had that accent you know he he is kind of like out for justice you know that he play he, he which by the way he doesn't do accents well he can already it already is hard enough for him to act so just just do your best <laughs> yeah. you can in your normal voice anyway. Uh, I just yeah, I feel like he was more quick to to throw down in above the law. If he didn't like yeah. what you said, he was. I'm just going to end it, buddy. You know, I'll show you. And you know, I think hard to kill. It was just you had to be kind of a shit and be asking for it. And above the law, four guys jump out of a car like an El Camino with like a with a machete and a gun and a baseball bat, and he's just like, bring it on. Yeah, you yeah, know? and it's yeah. And that was yeah, he's tucked it, he had a tucked in shirt and skinny jeans. He's like, oh, I mean, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> the day you yeah. die. You mess with the wrong guy. Uh, all right. Well, that that's going to do it uh, for the versus above the law versus hard to kill. Hard to kill is the winner, um, which I'm happy with because that's my oh, favorite yeah. Seagal movie anyway. But nonetheless, both great movies, uh, both worth checking out. If you haven't, I recommend them. I know they don't have the greatest ratings. And despite what you might think about the dude right now, uh, there was a time where he was legit a, a badass on screen. So, and maybe even in real life. Uh, so, yeah, definitely go check those out. And uh, next time on Versus, we've got uh, our special uh, redo, redo, rematch, if you will, for Halloween 2 versus Friday the 13th Part 2. We did this a few years back and we we cheated the people and we cheated, our, <laughs> and we we cheated ourselves. Did. We cheated ourselves. We we ended up in a tie. And, we remained friends, and we all yeah we all we all let each other get in our head our each other's heads, and we we decided to be nice and be respectful to each other, and that's not happening anymore. There has nope. to be a winner. There has to be a winner. So Some scratching and spitting and fighting. Yeah, I will I will lose all of my friends over this. Um, <laughs> no, uh, we <laughs> no we Me we will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. <laughs> yeah, but my, yeah, they're in this chat right now. Um, except for Chris, he's not here with us again. But we will throw down in the next verses, and Kenny will be back. So we will see you all then.